How's it going everybody? Daner here with North Central Coins and welcome back to another episode of the most rare and valuable coins in Canada. Today we're going to be discussing a Canadian quarter that has one of the lowest mintage figures of any circulation coin ever produced. Because not many of these quarters were struck, it makes finding them in your pocket change pretty tricky but not impossible and this is a coin that's value is definitely exceeded by its rarity. In this video we will explore the historical context surrounding the production of this incredible piece of Canadian numismatic history and additionally we will discuss the distinguishing and identifying features, its significance among collectors and also potential value if you are ever to find a legitimate example. Before I do get into this I would really appreciate if you guys would smash that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new and also ring that bell notification. And make sure to stay to the end of the video if you'd like to find out how much you could get for this coin if you did ever find one and then without further ado what do you say we get right into it and discuss the Canadian 1991 quarter. Let's get it guys. So before we do get into the value and specifications for the 1991 quarter, I thought I would go over some of the story of how a coin with such a limited mintage can actually come into existence. Coin mintage refers to the quantity of a specific coin design produced by a mint during a particular year or time period. It is a fundamental aspect of a coin's history and production. The rarity of coins is usually measured on how scarce or uncommon they are in relativity to its total mintage. Coins with lower mintages are generally considered more rare because there are fewer of them available to collectors or the public. Several factors contribute to the rarity of a coin, including mintage numbers. Coins with low mintage numbers are inherently rare. When fewer coins are minted, there are fewer available to collectors to acquire. Survival rate. The number of coins that have survived over time also affects rarity. Coins that were well preserved or saved by collectors are more likely to be available today. Melting and withdrawal. Changes in composition or economic factors like the alloy recycling program can lead to the withdrawal and melting of coins. This reduces the number of surviving specimens and increases the rarity of some dates. Coins that have garnered significant collector interest tend to be less common in the market due to collectors acquiring and holding on to them. Rarity is a critical factor in determining the value of a coin. Generally, rarer coins command higher prices in the numismatic market. Collectors and investors are often willing to pay a premium for coins that are difficult to obtain due to their limited availability. The condition or grade of a rare coin can also significantly impact its value. Coins in excellent condition are more desirable to collectors and can fetch higher prices. Usually coins with low mintage figures will also hold some historical significance. They may mark a special period, event, or a change in coinage history. This historical context adds to their appeal and value. Numismatists value coin that provide insights into the past and low mintage coins often do just that. Collector preferences can drive demand for specific coins. Coins that are part of a series or set have unique designs or represent specific milestones and are highly sought after. Collector demand can create competition and influence prices, particularly for rare and desirable coins. Market trends including auction results and changing collector taste can impact the value of coins. Prices for some key dates may fluctuate based on market dynamics and also demand from buyers. Another major factor that could have led to the creation of the Canadian 1991 quarter is labor disputes and strikes. Labor disputes, strikes, or work stoppages at a mint can disrupt normal coin production operations. Mint employees, including coin press operators, engravers, and other key personnel may participate in strikes to demand better working conditions, higher wages, or other labor-related issues. Strikes often lead to production delays as mint facilities may operate at reduced capacity or cease production altogether during the strike period. This can result in a backlog of coins that need to be minted once the strike is resolved. A strike can directly impact the mintage numbers for a given year or denomination. If the work strike occurs during the planned production window for a particular coin, the mint might not actually be able to produce as many coins were as originally intended. This can lead to a lower mintage for the affected coin. Strikes may also affect the quality of coins produced during and immediately following the strike period. Mint employees returning to work after a strike may need some time to ensure that the coin presses and equipment are operating smoothly, potentially impacting the quality of the struck coins. 
In the case of the 1991 Canadian quarter, if there was indeed a strike at the Canadian Mint during that year, it could have contributed to the lower mintage of quarters for that specific date. The disruption in production and potential quality control issues may have led to a scarcity of well-struck uncirculated specimens, further enhancing the coin's rarity and desirability. Now, some of the reasons that the 1991 Canadian quarters are considered so rare compared to their counterparts in the similar date ranges. In 1991, the Canadian Mint produced a significantly lower number of these quarters compared to other years. This limited mintage is a key factor in the coin's rarity. The exact reasons for this low mintage are not always publicly disclosed by mints, but there are a few potential explanations. Economic factors. Economic conditions can influence a mint's decision to reduce coin production. In times of economic uncertainty or budget constraints, mints may reduce the production of certain denominations, including quarters, to save on costs. So, foreseeing the production of the 1992 Provincial Series, they may have actually reduced the size of the production run for 1991 quarters. I don't think they intended to reduce it that small, but that would definitely be a good reason right there. Supply and Demand if there was a surplus of quarters from previous years in circulation and a reduced demand for new quarters, the Mint may have decided to produce fewer coins to avoid an oversupply. While the reverse design of the 1991 quarter was not unique or commemorative, it's possible that the Canadian Mint still opted for a lower mintage that year based on their production plans and priorities. Over time, the low mintage of the 1991 quarter gained the attention of coin collectors and numismatists worldwide. The combination of a low mintage figure and the regular design led to increased demand among collectors, further driving up its rarity and value in the secondary market. Many of the 1991 quarters that were minted entered circulation where they endured wear and tear. As a result, finding well-preserved uncirculated specimens from that year became increasingly challenging, contributing to their rarity. So what do you say we go over some of the specifications and give you guys the potential values if you did ever discover one of these in your pocket change or coin roll hunting. So the Canadian 1991 quarter has a mintage figure of 459,000. It is composed of 100% nickel. It has a weight of 5.05 grams, a diameter of 23.88 millimeters, and a thickness of 1.58 millimeters. The coin was designed and engraved by Dora Pedri Hunt and Ago Aran for the obverse and Emmanuel Han for the reverse. The edge is reeded, it is magnetic, and it comes in metal alignment as is the standard for most Canadian coins. Now one of the greatest things about this 1991 quarter is that it is a coin that retains a premium even on the low end. If you find one of these and it's all beat up and been put through the meat grinder and it's at the very bottom of the Sheldon grading scale, you can still get some decent money for it around five to ten dollars which is a decent profit considering that you only invested 25 cents to find the coin. But when you start to get into the MS region, you start to see some pretty big price jumps. It can be worth around $10 for an MS60, around $20 for an MS64, and all the way up to $120 for an MS66. And this is a coin that's value is only gonna go up over time. It doesn't just have one of the lowest mintage figures of any Canadian coin in the last 50 years, but any coin produced in North America, probably within the last 150 years. This is an incredibly rare coin, but it is one that is fairly modern and they are still floating out there. I've known several Canadian coin roll hunters that have found even a few of these in their coin roll hunts, and I know that you can find them in your pocket change too. So it is definitely a good one to keep your eyes out for. And I only see the value going up on these bad boys as time goes on. Now, what do you guys think about the Canadian 1991 quarter? What would you ever do if you found a legitimate example or if you ever have found any of the coins discussed in this video? Let me know down in the comments. I would love to know. Also, I would really appreciate if you guys would smash that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also ring that bell notification so you can stay up to date with my new content. But I think that is pretty much gonna do it for this one, folks. So until the next one, everybody, peace out and have a good one, y'all.